Cold frames are a great way to extend the season. Today I'll show you how to make one. We have four sides made out of wood, and the top can be either a window uh, or any sort of semi-transparent or transparent material to let the sunlight in. Basically you want to create like a little greenhouse. You'll need to start with a window or transparent lid of some sort. So I recommend going on Craigslist and seeing what you can find for free. I actually found three windows for free in my area and that works out great. But if you're going to buy a lid, I would not recommend buying a brand new window because that is just too expensive. Instead, um, look for a cheaper, maybe plastic material or something like that. Your cold frame should have a slope to it and it should slope facing south because if you're in the northern hemisphere, that's where the sun is. Now, if you're in the southern hemisphere, you'll want your slope facing north. Notice that the slant here is made out of cutting a piece of wood on the diagonal. Hey, Fern. Cut it on the diagonal to get that slant. And some people opt, opt for a steeper slope, but I like a more shallow slope because it actually gives you more more floor space. I chose to make the side with the slant be the same length as one of the sides of my window. And that means that the other side that doesn't have the slant, in other words the front and back, they should be a little bit longer than one side of your window. And that's because, of course, you want to be able to connect it here. And in this case these boards are one inch thick. So I gave about a three quarters of an inch on either side just to connect with that, put my screws in. I also have in each corner a post like this, um, which the screws are going into, and as you can see um, it's splitting a little bit at the top, but that's okay um, because there are plenty of connections over here. Um, two screws on each board on each side, so I think it should hold. To decide how tall you want it, think about what types of plants you want to grow in there and how tall they will be. Um, in the front, mine are about a foot and a half tall. Um, in the back, it's about two feet tall. Um, common lumber size is uh, six inches by one inch. Um, talking about this measurement here, of course, six inches by one inch. Um, and so um, you'll need to decide how much uh, lumber you'll need based on how tall you want it to be and also, of course, um, how long your sides are. So um, this this one is four foot by four foot and I wanted four I want it four boards tall in the back and three boards tall in the front. So I ended up needing seven eight foot boards. So an alternative to using the wooden post in the corner would be to use one of these guys, which is called a, sometimes called an L bracket or a framing anchor. And um, they're pretty cheap. These are like 50 cents each, um, and you could use that instead of the wooden post if you want. Um, but I would definitely not recommend just drilling straight through into the other board because it's not really going to be strong enough when you're mo trying to move it into position here. Um, after you build it, you want to move it into a, a pit like this, and I'll go over that later. So now that we've talked about materials, let's look at the tools you'll need. Um, this is it. Uh, at least you'll need a handsaw, a Phillips head screwdriver. Make sure that um, it actually fits the screws that you're using. Um, pencil and a tape measure. Uh, of course, 
it, the job would be easier to use a power saw and especially to use a power drill to get your uh, pilot tools for the screws. But I'll show you how you don't really need those power tools. This is the most important part of the whole process here, and that is measuring your window exactly. Um, so this window supposedly is uh, three foot um, on the short side and, and four foot on the long side, but when I really measure it here, it looks to be actually, seems like it's 30, see that, 34 inches, um, but when you actually cut the board for this side, you should make it uh, 35 inches. Always, uh, actually just add one inch to the side because you want to make sure that it's not going to be too tight of a fit. I had that problem over here, um, with my other three foot by four foot window on the side. It didn't really, didn't really connect like I wanted it to, so I had to uh, bend this board a little bit. For the other side, I measure about 47 inches. Um, but remember, you want to give yourself a little extra to account for the thickness on either side. So um, I recommend a 3 quarter inch on either side if you have 1 inch thick boards. So. Um, when I'm measuring this side to be 47, I'm actually going to add uh, three quarters of an inch plus another three quarters of an inch. So basically an inch and a half um, will make it uh, 48.5 inches um, to account for the thickness of the board. Um, if you're using two inch thick wood, um, then you may want to add a little bit more to that. Um, maybe. Uh, add three inches to the exact measurement. So one question you might have is if we've measured the window side to be a specific length and the di and then we cut it at a diagonal then that might be a different length you know than we measured for this to be. Um, but um, in my case that's not really an issue because with the shallow slope all that does is it really just gives you an extra half inch or so on the diagonal, um, which is good because you don't want the window to fit in there super snug. Um, and in my case, I have a little bit of a lip on the window here that will account for a little bit of extra that I might have. So if you opt for a steeper slope, you would want to um, actually measure the, the side of the window first and cut, you'd want to cut these shorter and to do that you'd just use the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared but I don't want to get too much into that um, since we don't need to worry about it with a shallow slope like this. So I'm going to make this side 48 and a half, mark that, and I recommend actually marking it in three spots at least along here to make your straight edge. And from the other side, I'm going to measure my 35 inches, and I'm going to do this on all seven Make sure your board is sitting on something sturdy, um, ideally that you can sit on. Um, so I'm going to just sit down here, take my hand saw, and just saw right across. The hardest part of using a hand saw like this is just getting the notch started. So what you want to do is just put it in position and put a lot of force going down to get it started a little bit. Do that again. Again. 
after about three or four times, you should have a little good little notch going. And after that, that's pretty fast. The next thing I need to do is cut the vertical posts, and since I already have one constructed, I'll use that as an example. Um, there's going to be two short pieces and two long pieces. Um, so in the front, the short pieces, uh, I chose to make 15 inches high because the three 6-inch boards um, already give uh, 18 inches, but you want to make it a little bit smaller um, so that the window can dip down and seal properly. So in the back, then instead of making it uh, 24 inches, I made it about uh, 22, it looks like. Um, you could maybe go with 21. Another manual tool you may want to consider buying is a sanding block, which looks like this. And basically, you just put a piece of sandpaper in there, and there's little nails, and he lifts these things up. And uh, this is really just optional if you want to make these more smooth. In my case, I had one piece in particular that uh, got pretty bad on the corner. So I have seven long boards and seven short boards now. And these short ones, the the 35 inch side, I'm going to take one of these and cut into to a diagonal. So I'll s just select one that looks the nicest um, and use that since it'll be on top. So I have a piece here that has a few knots in it, but um, at least from here to the other corner, I don't have any knots on that line. So I'm just going to take a straight edge, such as one of my other boards, and try to line that up, and we'll cut the short one at a diagonal. Start your notch a little bit on the inside, so that you have a little bit of a lip there at the bottom. So what I've done here is actually marked the perfect diagonal line with a pencil and then started cutting a little bit inside of that line so I have a lip so I can put a screw in. Um, and then as I was going along, I actually want to line that up almost perfectly with the pencil marking and then do the same thing on the other side. So you start inside the lip and then go along until you hit the exact pencil marking. So I'm using these two 4 inch boards as my vertical posts and now I'm going to take three of the 5 inch boards and look, find one that uh, has a, an ugly side to it and choose that one as the bottom. So this one I think looks the worst so I'll put that facing inside on the bottom and line it up with these posts on the edges. So I do have a power drill, which I will end up using probably to drill my pilot holes, but I want to show you all how you don't really need one, so I'll put a couple screws in without it. Put my screw in here, and there it is, it's like your, it's like your pilot hole right there. Push down hard. it's already standing on its own and as I screw this in I want to apply more pressure to this board um, once I feel it hitting the other board on bottom. So put one screw on either side that way um, you can adjust the angle of this board if you need to. Um, so I put one screw here, one screw there and then put my second board on top and make sure 
that on the side here it's an alignment so now on this side this vertical post only comes up to here but I'm just going to put a screw in this way on top and then on this side I'm just going to put the two screws in the regular way but I'm going to also be careful that I actually am in going into this board and for our second wall we want to make sure that it's a mirror image to this one not exactly identical so with this one when we laid it down and started building it we had the long piece on the right side and the short piece on the left side so I'm going to do the opposite of that I'm going to have the long piece on the left and the short piece on the right for the second wall. Now this next step is really optional. I'm going to lay some newspaper down and put these side walls over them. And then I'm going to uh, seal the gaps with a little bit of wood glue. And this, um, putting the wood glue between the boards and rubbing it smooth with a sharp edge um, that will prevent any uh, drafts from blowing through the walls and I'm only going to do this on the side walls uh, you could choose to do this on all four <laughs> I'm going to construct the back wall and I'm pushing the side walls up against the side of the house here to steady them and I'm also using some cinder block to hold them in place. You could also have another person help you steady them and pretty much have the same thing going on with the other wall and now we'll throw some boards down for the back wall and start screwing them in place. So now I'm just leaning my window up against the sides before I attach any boards actually um, to make sure it lines up properly. Now we want to be really careful that everything measures up with this window. So we know right now because it's leaning against this part that this is a good measurement and it looks like the exact measurement there is 47 and an eighth inch that's not counting the posts. So I just want to make sure that in every spot, well, at least in a few spots in the middle, we have that same measurement. 47 and an eighth. It's definitely not that. Um, even right here, it's about 48 inches. So that means that the back is too wide, and I'll just push that in and keep measuring it and make sure that everything fits that 47 and an eighth from side to side. Now I've rotated it completely and I'm going to install the front wall, but before I do that I should make sure that it's still 47 and an eighth inch. So I'll remeasure it and make any adjustments I need. As I put the last screw in, it marks the completion of construction and I was going to show how to dig out a trench and install the cold frame, but I think I'll probably cover that in another video. 
But here you have it. Completed cold frame. So one final note, if you do want to have a steeper slope on your window, um, here's how you would want to cut your short sides. So let's say you have a window like so. They're just the cross beams. So this is your window. And let's say this is the side that's not slanted that you don't care about. So it doesn't really matter what this is. But we're talking about the shorter side. Let's say here along along this edge you had 36 inches. And let's say you have 12 inches that you want to have a drop down. So 12 inches and you want to drop down 36 inches this way. Twelve inches and thirty-six this way. So basically when you cut your lumber, you'll even want to probably have two pieces here. And to determine, say, how long we want to cut this piece, just give that a name. We can call this A. And use the Pythagorean theorem you've probably heard of. It says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that tells us, well, a squared plus, well, what's b and what's c? c is always the longest side of the triangle, so the, your slanted side, that's, that's your c. So equal 36 squared, b squared is 12 squared. You could pull out a calculator now and get these values. Um, so a squared equals, oh, excuse me, a squared plus 144, that's 12 squared, equals 36 squared. I'm not sure what that is. I'll figure that out later. Um, but basically, you want to solve for a squared. So just subtract this number from both sides. I'm subtracting 144 thir equals 36 squared. Subtract 144 from this side. So these 144s cancel, and now we just have a squared equals this number, 36 squared minus 144. So I got out my calculator and figured out that 36 squared is 1296, and when you subtract 144 from that, you get 1152. So a squared equals 1152. Now on my calculator. I take the square root of that. So a equals the square root of 1152. This is going to tell us how many inches we have. 33.9 approximately. 33.9 inches. So there you go. So we can round our 33.9 up to 34 to make things easy. Um, and basically for the other measurements on the other board, you just take half of it. So if this is 34 inches, you can call this one 17 inches, because you're splitting this directly in half, so 6 inches and 6 inches, if we had 12. And then this right here would be 18.